Well, good evening, everybody, at Environmental Coffee House Chat. I am Sandy Shellis. This is Jennifer Hines. Welcome, welcome. Let me open the chat so I can see who's with us. It's great. We got a full house of 20 so far. That's great. <laughs> and you, well, you know how people join. They join. Hi, Veg. Uh, Raza. Um, it is hat night. I'm cold. And quite frankly, I was outside running after a cat who got outside. So I said, screw it. I'm, I'm a mess. I'm leaving the hat on. And so Jennifer decided to join me so I wouldn't feel alone in hatness. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> alone in hatness. So we've got a pretty good show for you guys. Um, I'm going to let Jennifer take over yep. and tell us what we're doing. Hey everybody, good to be here. Happy to be with you today. We have such an interesting show, I'm sure you'll agree. It's pretty much about Russia and the yeah. Arctic, spoiler alert there. We've got, I think, two or three videos, Sandy. Yeah, um, two. Our first little video that we're gonna play is why Russia is building the Arctic Silk Road. Fascinating, mm. the power play in geopolitics yeah, oh that Russia gosh. is making right now. And then we're gonna go over to a periodical called the Russia Briefing and this is an investment periodical why investors should be looking to the russian arctic for opportunities and this will give us a good idea as to yeah. what the russians are up to and yeah. why and can we say money 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 will i get a copyright <laughs> <laughs> and All then right. we have the uh, Silk Road Briefing, which we have never done an article from the Silk Road Briefing before. Oh, no. oh, New no. polar silk roads discussed at the Arctic Circle Assembly. So this is all about the development that's happening at breakneck is, speed. And we in have the, the Russia Arctic. theme. We are in the Russia theme, guys. We are. We're in the Russia we theme can't tonight. Lie. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Born and then and then we have another little video preserving the permafrost so interesting and i'm gonna eat my words from last week sandy because remember i laughed at you all when when oh. you said that mammoths were gonna save the earth and i was like poo poo right. well silly me i i had no idea yeah and this <laughs> so guy then we're gonna, this scientist is awesome then we're gonna run over to the bloomberg news and we're gonna tell you it's from bloomberg.com we're gonna tell you about the russian scientists have a mammoth plan to fight arctic warming and this is real stuff guys you won't believe it but they are they're bringing back the the mammoth god knows what they're gonna yeah. do with them well, and then we have an learn. article from, yeah, and then we have an article from uh, Reuters, Father and Son's Ice Age Plot to Slow Siberian Thaw. So there are a lot of people trying to figure out how to slow the thaw of the permafrost. And these guys and, have been doing this for a while. Yeah. 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 And then we have one from The Economist. Uh, one Russian scientist hopes to slow the thawing of the Arctic Sea theme. There's a pattern here. I just know it. Yeah, and um, then we have one from Partner Science, which I don't know that we've done Partner Science Norway before. This is Norwegian publication. I hope I have it open. <laughs> if I don't, oh, it's okay. Well, if not, I'll, I'll, I'll pop it, it over to you. I'll yep. pop it over to you. The Silk the polar silk road is a myth but what of russian activities along the northern sea route and it, this is optional sandy we can do or not do that but i i saw i had that one up so i threw it in and uh then we are we gonna tie it up with anything is that it well we're gonna are we gonna i think we tie it up with the last one. Oh, the russia beyond what is the pleistocene park and how can it stop i mean we'll go over it we'll show the pictures yeah. and all yeah, it'll it'll be a little uh, redundant yeah. at the end, but still, it's a it's a good. Yeah, show. we'll see how far we get. We're not going to yeah. drag it into the multi yeah. hours, right? But we you do know, it's gonna be an hour have show. we do have a video to start with, 
And yeah. this this video is from um, an organization called the B1M. And they uh, it, it says the construction, the Russian Arctic construction boom is seriously warming up. And we will learn a lot from them. They are a construction company. You know, they are out there to make a buck. So uh, while we play this, I... Um, we're going to play it and this is we want you to watch and pay really close attention this is a this is a this is a learning experience for sure i mean it is completely all right so we're going to play yeah, this very much. we're going to start this right now at the start come on In 2017, a Russian oil tanker traveled across the Arctic without needing an icebreaker. That's a huge deal. The journey connected Asia to Europe in just 19 days, far shorter than the 48 days it normally takes for ships to go from China to Europe's largest port in Rotterdam. That's right, our warming climate is melting the ice caps and has made this patch of ocean available for the first time in human history, making it easier for us to transport the fossil fuels that caused the ice to melt in the first place. It's an irony-heavy ocean trade route that we've never had before, and right now Russia is in the middle of a massive construction drive to lay claim. This $110 billion megaport on the Tamer Peninsula is quite possibly the most impressive thing that Russia's building right now. Dubbed the biggest project in the modern-day global oil industry, it'll house the country's largest Arctic oil terminal, and it's so huge and so remote that state-owned oil company Rosneft will first have to build the infrastructure needed just to get to the site. New highways, two airports, 15 villages, and several electric plants will be developed around the area to get construction off the ground and house the 400,000 workers that are needed to make it all happen. So far, more than 18,000 tonnes of heavy machinery, living quarters and communications equipment has been shipped to the site. The country is also building a 770 kilometre pipeline to transport oil to the port, where 10 new ice-class tankers will then take it the rest of the way to Europe and Asia. Greta Thunberg better look away now, because once fully operational, it's going to deliver 25 million tonnes of oil by 2025 and 100 million tonnes by 2030. It's worth pointing out that while the costs of this undertaking seem enormous, they pale in comparison to the profits that are set to be generated. And this megaport is only one part of a larger development scheme in the region. The Russians have long seen the potential of the Arctic. In 2007, they sent a very cold diver down to the bottom of the Arctic Sea to plant a flag at the North Pole. Then in 2019, the country announced its Northern Sea Route Development Plan. The idea is to significantly increase Russian economic development along the Northern Sea Route over the next 15 years, essentially opening the area up as an alternative to the Suez Canal for shipping cargo between Europe and Asia especially during the summer months, when the ice covering the sea could eventually disappear altogether. By 2035, Russia aims to increase cargo flow through the area by at least 72 million tonnes, and it's on track to hit that. In 2018 alone, traffic increased by 80% from the previous year to 16 million tonnes, and in 2019, it went up to 23 million. Russian Arctic infrastructure is being brought in from the cold and getting some serious cash splashed on it. Ports are being modernised, ice-class container ships are being constructed, and railways are being expanded. And it goes beyond oil. Russian state-owned energy company Rosatom, along with UAE-based DP World, are co-developing new ports at Mamansk and Vladivostok on either side of the route. They're being specially designed to transfer cargo off ice-class ships and onto ordinary vessels. The UAE isn't the only country to see the opportunity of investing in Russia's infrastructure. South Korea and China are both eager for new ports and trade routes too. 
As the world is concerned about climate change and Arctic ice melt, there is one nation which of course is rejoicing in this rather worrying phenomenon. And it happens to be China. In 2018, China declared it would cooperate with Russia on a new Arctic Silk Road, signing 20 bilateral cooperative documents and agreeing to invest in the region. As part of this, Beijing will build several Chinese docks across Russia's north, in ports that are currently underdeveloped and unable to handle massive volumes of shipping. As we said, a number of new railways are also being built to service these ports. Construction's underway on a 500-kilometre line to link Perm in the Ural Mountains with several northern port cities. Russia also recently installed a $889 million fibre nicknamed the Polar Express. The 12,600-kilometre-long cable stretches from the rural village of Teriburka to Vladivostok, improving internet and phone connections for the 2.5 million people who live in Russia's far north, roughly half the population of the entire Arctic. Several civilian airports are also getting a birthday, Amderma in the west and Pivik, Chesky and Cape of M in the east. The dredging of the Gulf of Ob is set to be completed in 2022, allowing larger ships to pass through this strategic location, ships that Russia is building in spades. A fleet of at least 40 new Arctic vessels will be constructed, including eight nuclear-powered icebreakers and 16 rescue and support ships. Some of these will be LIDAR-class icebreakers, which basically means they can break through extremely thick Arctic ice and create a path for commercial ships to then follow. Now, as you might expect, all this construction has made several countries nervous. We're concerned about Russia's claim over the international waters of the Northern Sea Route, including its newly announced plans to connect it with China's Maritime Silk Road. The US has reminded Russia that the Northern Sea Route and Northwest Passage are used as straits for international navigation and are not exclusively under their control, although a lot of the route does fall into the country's exclusive economic zone. No one denies Russia has significant Arctic interests. Its actions deserve special attention of this council in part because of their sheer scale. Russia is also dependent on foreign investment to fund much of this new infrastructure, relying on other countries who would greatly benefit from an alternative to the Suez Canal. Now, the country has always maintained that its new oil megaports will be environmentally friendly and that they have a very small hydrocarbon footprint. The oil installations will reportedly be powered by wind turbines. But building new oil infrastructure is not really what the world needs right now, and several environmental groups have campaigned against these projects. Parts of the oil fields are located within a protected nature reserve, and construction could damage the Arctic wildlife there. Russia is the world's fourth largest emitter of greenhouse gases, and ratified the Paris Agreement in 2019. Now it's committed to reaching net zero carbon emissions by 2060 although it's yet to agree to phase out coal and methane emissions over the next decade. One thing's clear, as we progress through the 21st century and sadly see less and less ice in the Arctic, the world is going to change in more ways than we expect. If you enjoyed this video and you want to get more from the definitive video channel for construction, subscribe to the B1M. I would fascinating. say that was, uh, yeah. yeah, it's purely the, the capitalists, you know, purely the oligarchs and the capitalists and the, you know, the billionaires. Um, wait, I have to shut, shut that off. <sighs> okay. Okay. Sorry. I didn't know if you could hear that or not. So here we are again. I thought it was fascinating to see what they're doing and the different routes and, and all. And yeah. wow. Wow. No, they're going all in heavy I know. for the Arctic with with no stop in 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 sight. I mean, they're just drilling, they're making ports, they're making ships, they're very uh, new uh, Polar Express, uh, big high speed cable. Amazing. Yep. So they is. are going to be the Unreal. world power in the Arctic, no doubt. Unreal. So that's why yeah. we were going to segue over to uh, show you 
the not this one the investing stuff and this is Russia briefing but this is a company called Dazan Shira and Associates and I'm going to try the camera overlays one more time and it does, I can't seem to get them to work so we won't you won't see us but we'll look at this mm -hmm. and uh why investors should be looking to the Russian Arctic for opportunity so here we go uh, go ahead, Jen. Why don't you? Uh, okay, take a gander sure. Just at the the high level bullet points for this. Yeah. It's uh, emphasizing the Northern Sea Passage route is open, opening up in the Arctic. That's number one. Number two, huge time and cost savings on the China Europe shipping, no doubt about half, I believe. Uh, Massive Arctic free trade zone has been announced. There is a significant tans, uh, tax and financial incentive and free land use available. That's amazing. They're giving away a lot of Arctic land. Yeah. The Russian Arctic might not initially seem the most obvious place for foreign investors to look at. However, there is a great deal of regional investment going into the area. There are three principal drivers for this. Global warming, the Russia LNG, liquid natural gas, yeah. and China trade. We can examine these and how they are impacting uh, upon the Arctic development as follows. Number one, global warming. There are good points and bad points to this. The bad being the melting of the permafrost resulting in land instability and damage to buildings as we have seen. Methane gas emissions from a warming tundra also accelerate the greenhouse effect, further compounding the problem. Many flora and fauna species will become extinct. There is no doubt that global warming will wreak serious damage to the Arctic ecosystems and the mm -hmm. entire phenomena is a global tragedy, mm -hmm. no doubt, right? Mm -hmm. Humans, however, are an exploitive species as well as um well there is a lot of other things i could say besides exploitive but whatever <laughs> and the warming opens up the long treasured northern sea passage a trade route that has been in the minds of adventurers and tradesmen for over 500 years mm. Jeez, yeah you know you kept seeing uh, those things when you were in grade school, right? The the Northwest Passage and people mm -hmm. have been dreaming of getting across the Arctic in a boat for a very long time. The Northern Sea Passage. It was the British Muscovy Company that originally raised capital from investors to explore the possibility of a Northern Sea Passage back in 1555. Wow. 500 years, guys, 500 years people have been fantasizing about this, right? You, you know they're going to just exploit the hell out of it. Wow. It is the first major chartered joint stock company, the precursor of any type of business that would soon flourish in England and finance its exploration of the world. The passage was never found viable. There were several boats that got stuck, right? Trying to find it. But the idea of trade with both Russia and Asia via the Arctic never left the public, political, or, com or commercial imagination. Today, however, the Northern Sea Passage is becoming a sustainable route. Well, you so, bet it. Okay. Yeah. There yeah. it is. I've got it right there. Yeah. Hmm. Arctic LNG, the liquid natural gas, the now annual meaning melting of Arctic ice has opened up the route, which although carries some dangers, is ushering in a new generation of nuclear-powered Arctic-capable vessels. Russia Lovely. is a leader. I know, isn't it wonderful? Yeah. Russia is a leader in this technology and is introducing new icebreakers and bulk cargo ships to handle these Arctic conditions. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. um, he introduced both of these vessels in a previous article, 
and was called Arctica Nuclear Powered Icebreaker Clears Northern Passage Sea Route. Well, we don't care about that. Um, A major driver of this development are the Russia LNG fields at the Yamal Peninsula in Siberia. The Power of Siberia project is by far the largest Belt and Road initiative and involves several pipelines from the Yamal from Yamal to China. Phase one has already been completed and LNG is now being piped to China. Other pipelines are being considered, including via Mongolia. Such pipelines are high tech. They need to be able to withstand temperatures as low as negative 62 degrees centigrade, which is negative 79 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. Nano composite coatings are used to increase the lifetime of the pipelines, which must also be able to withstand earthquakes by incorporating materials that we will deform under seismic activity. Oh, perm- permafrost melt or uh, thaw as well, hopefully, right? Sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Internal, well, we'll see how they work. Internal coatings ensure energy efficiency by reducing the friction of the pipeline's inner surfaces. The Power of Siberia project alone provides China with enough liquid natural gas for the next 30 years. Yeah, 30 years. (laughs) Oh, Oh, boy. I know. WASF, Sandy. I mean, 30 years. But then when you look at all the comments and you look at the commenters in, in in these articles, or or on different fi- uh, YouTube videos, they're they're all just, you know, crazy on these on these videos. In that last mm-hmm. one we saw, they're all like, "Oh, you know, the United States will be the energy loser by 2035, and China and Russia will just be winning." And I'm thinking, we're getting worse. What are we going to do? Mm. Have carbon capture on every single like everything we walk around with carbon capture units on our bodies? <laughs> Mm. Unbelievable. Do Mm. you want to continue with this one? Sure. However, the Northern Sea Passage also provides for deliveries by ship and contingency should anything happen to pipeline supplies. India is a customer for Russian LNG, and the first shipments began in 2018. Indian Prime Minister Modi, ever the businessman, when touring Vladsov talk shipyards on a trip to Russia last year was impressed by the new technologies and then asked if India could partner with Russia in the building of Arctic generation of container ships. India has major yards in both Chennai and Gurjat, where Modi is from. With other Asian economies looking for supplies, Yamal LNG provides a clean and effective solution. Yes, the does. Yamal it's... Peninsula is part of the Ob Bay and Ob River estuary. Okay. A decision as to whether the Ob River will be dredged to accommodate the traffic will be decided. Now there are we saw in that video they're dredging the Ob um, we are right now. So wow. that decision was made, right? Mm. They're dredging it. How much cargo it will send off into the northern sea route isn't yet clear, but it will mark a new turn in shipping toward the east and to Asia instead of Europe. Do you want to take it away, Sandy? Or what do you sure. want to do? It's a, it's, it's a long one. And I, I'm not yeah. going to go. I don't want to go into the, the growth or anything. I thought I would like yeah. to look at the Arctic Rail Network part. Uh, this yeah. interests me. Um, Russia also intends to exploit its Arctic resources. And global warming makes that easier. Access. However, the infrastructure still needs to be either upgraded or built and critical to northern sea route development are new railway lines. Very critical. So Russia's new development plan for the northern sea route was signed off by then Prime Minister Dmitry Medvedev Medvedev, um, on the 21st of December last year, including the decision of... A new rail to Sabetta, the main seaport for the Yamal LNG project. The decision whether to build a railroad between Arkhangelsk 
on the Arctic coast to Strekvakar and Perm in southern uh, central Siberia will be decided in 2022. So by 2024, the government will decide whether to extend the railways west from Salkard on the southern Yamal pe- Peninsula to the town of uh, Novi Urge- uh Arengoy, in the Yamal Nene Autonomous Region. So they're going to build it up, okay? Build they it are. up, build it up. Totally. They've got the the, the transport's going to be a transport hog, hub. And let's look at the, the graphic. We'll make it a little bit bigger if I can. And we'll see where the, because that's that's interesting, you know, the, mm-hmm. see they're, where they're going to mm-hmm. do more in the, ra- I wonder if they're going to have passenger rail so people like us could actually tough it with a backpack and take the rail, <laughs> like the Trans-Siberian Railway, which I would love to do. So there's that. And, uh, all right, I'll make it smaller and we'll go back to the article in, um, and then, of course, they're going to do the airports. And mm-hmm. here we go. Several Arctic airports, likewise, will get major upgrades for are in the process of being upgraded as the government plans for development of the Northern Sea Routes infrastructure to begin to take shape. So, um, you know, all over pretty much. Mm-hmm. And the ports, okay, Arkhangelsk. Well, it's probably not Ark. Arkhangelsk, Arkhangelsk. That's it. That's the that's the sound. The sk. Okay, I got it. They send and receive lumber, pulp, coal, machinery, metals, industrial and consumer goods, and is the operating base of the Northern Company, performing the maritime transport of the White, Barents, and Kara Seas, the Northern Passage, and overseas lines so there are regular passenger lines okay just like i was saying uh from there so you could go to uh, novaya simlaya you can go all over if you want to run and go on these passenger lines but that's and then they're going to build more so it's build 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 look at uh yeah I mean, it's a port town, you know. Look They're at building that. it all up as and fast well, as they possibly lives, can. All the workers live in these buildings. This is what happens. They are housed. And I was doing um, some research, uh, Jen, on the Russian economy and how they I work know. because they are an authoritarian oligarchy. But they're, you know, they have a capitalist system to a degree. They are not communists. They give their people health insurance, though. They have health insurance and they don't have to pay for higher ed. And in places like what we're seeing right here this is a port city so all the all the workers live there and pretty well contained so they do a lot of work here it's just put it this way i don't have to read it because they're bringing a lot of crap in and they plan Mm -hmm. on bringing a lot more crap in and bringing it in between all over the arctic and they're gonna build smart roads and so these yeah. are the cities. Look at look at look at that bridge. It is wow. pretty darn amazing. It is. It's actually it's oh quite God. and look well the photography's good with the lights. Vladivostok. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're going. Jennifer and I okay. are going to the Arctic. Okay. We're, we're, yes, we're going we to decide how we're going to do this. See here, it's talking, it's Russia's border with China and North Korea, and it's Russia's mm-hmm. main port opening to the Pacific Ocean and markets in Japan, South oh, yeah. Korea, China, and the United States. So it's linked to Moscow via the Trans-Siberian Railway. Oh, my God, that was always a dream when I was younger. Yeah. But I'm sure we would be safe. We're pretty tough. I am. You know, you know what <laughs> I tough. noticed is what? when I was looking at all, they're building like what six new Russian ports or beefing out the ones that they already have, right? And building all these icebreakers and all these other ships to carry the LNG. But they're all at sea level and they're all on active permafrost. So wow. I don't see anything <laughs> wrong with this picture. What could possibly, what could possibly go wrong go with this wrong. picture? <laughs> I mean, the, I the mean, you know, they're going to get like, permamesh yeah. under all their new infrastructure. What are they going <laughs> to freeze all their infrastructure like that other uh, company that we were reading about? You know, freeze all the ground around their infrastructure. I mean, oh, what's yeah. going to happen when that permafrost, because they're building on permafrost, starts to give way? Maybe they've already thought about this. Maybe I'm just stating the obvious, but maybe. you know, maybe. Well, the rest of this article, I mean, it's it's quite 
it's quite comprehensive. It's and, quite involved. Uh, yeah, it is. So um, they're they they're giving Arctic residency. Actually, I'll show you this one. They're giving Arctic residency to um, uh, Arctic residents who are first to apply. So they're looking at this like it's a and and I like her 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 uh, coat, but I you don't like the this... fur. You know what this reminds me of, Sandy? What? When the what? West was opening up in the United States, you yeah. know, in the pioneer days, they yeah. used to give away land to homesteaders, right? I don't know how right. many acres. Was it like 50 acres or something? It was a lot, you know, but they were giving it away on pretty arid, tough land for the most part, you know, but well, there was a big doing. rush to claim as much, you know, this they're is not the primary... Now. The primo land that everybody wanted in the past but they're doing it with yeah, the yeah. arctic hectare program yeah. and so yeah. this is the deal you know what we're gonna have to move on because yeah the, it, we're, we're 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 all right so the next article yeah. here was the the polar silk roads discussed at the arctic circle embassy we're just basically this is a go through fast we're not reading it it's uh, assembly an arctic yeah. circle assembly right and we'll just tell you what that is um they have events it's an organization that let's see if i can um organization yeah this is from the silk road briefing right so yeah. it's going to really but the be all arctic about council that. it has the arctic council there's a lot of there's a lot involved so uh what we're going to see is that it's just telling everybody what's going on Melting sea ice in the Arctic is making it possible for the region to open the navigation. It's creating significantly shortened shipping lanes, such as the Northern Sea Passage. So we've pretty much gone over this. Yes. Because we have to move on because we have another video for you guys. And Ooh. then we're going to move on to the exciting <laughs> uh, uh, Jurassic Park. I mean, uh, <laughs> the remammothing of the Arctic. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So why don't we do that now? Why don't I, I'm going to play the video right now for you guys that are still with us. Cause uh, I forgot to email to all the buy me a coffee followers and that's like 76 people. <laughs> and I forgot, oh. but, but um, here we go. Let's watch this. This is a really interesting organization. And uh, here we go. Permafrost, it's called a ticket and time bulb because once it starts sowing, it's pretty much impossible to stop. Permafrost, it's a ground which is frozen for more than two years. In the summer, you can take a stick and you poke it to the ground and then maybe in a meter, a meter and a half, you will hit something solid that didn't thaw for many, many tens of thousands of years. That's permafrost. We are now about like 40,000 years in the past at this point. The permafrost which we care about is usually located in the top 40 meters. These top layers of permafrost store more organic carbon than all above ground vegetation of the planet. There's almost twice as much carbon stored in permafrost as there is in the entire Earth's atmosphere. And that's more than twice as much as there is in all of the trees combined across the planet. Where the climate is warm and where the trees grow very big, the only way to sequester lots of carbon there is in the form of stems of trees. But if you go to the Arctic, the situation is vice versa. The way to mitigate carbon in the northern environment is to develop soils. Your trees are small, thin, sparse, but the soils in the Arctic are cold. And if you have vegetation, which is developing deep root system, they will build up a huge storage of carbon. When that plant matter dies, instead of rotting down quickly because it's so cold, it kind of just builds up and you get these really deep, rich soils in the Arctic that you can see are full of this just kind of partly decomposed plant matter. All that carbon that at the moment is locked away in those soils is vulnerable to release into the atmosphere. And if just 10% is released, then we're looking at something like a 75 parts per million increase in the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere. That is a really significant change. When I was a kid, 
Temperature of permafrost used to be minus 6, and now it's minus 3, and even warmer. As soon as temperature of permafrost reaches zero, it starts thawing. If it thaws, microbes will awaken and start converting this organic matter into greenhouse gases. What happens in the Arctic unfortunately does not stay in the Arctic. If and when that carbon is released into the atmosphere, then of course the consequence of that is that we accelerate climate change, so we increase warming. More warming means, of course, more warming in the Arctic, and that means more thawing of the permafrost and more release of carbon into the atmosphere. And so we enter this sort of vicious cycle. If we do nothing, degradation of permafrost will not be gradual. It will be abrupt thaw. And this will lead to the collapse of the global climate. Grasslands can help. Poison Park. The idea was developed by my father, Sergei Zimov, back in the 1980s. It was even long before people were talking about the climate change. It was the idea of restoring the ecosystems in the Arctic the way it used to be. High productive grazing ecosystem. Back in the Poison period, we had millions of animals in the Arctic, and it was lots of forage for animals. It was herbs, it was grasses, it was nice pastures. And now, the ecosystems in the Arctic look totally different. This is typical forest, and it's most typical landscape in our territory. There is nothing to eat for herbivores. With the Poison Park, we want to take ecosystems to their original state, to restore the whole functionality of the ecosystems. We are increasing the number of animals and let them convert the landscape to the ecosystem which they need. Herbivores must prepare pasture for his children. How increase volume of pasture? You must kill trees. It's his genetic hobby. Kill enough trees and your children will find enough grass. More grasses, more food, more animals, more animals, more excrement. Better soil, grasses grow faster. Grasslands are faster at locking carbon into the soil than some other types of vegetation. Um, it's also got a different albedo, so that means that grassland ecosystem can reflect more radiation rather than absorbing that as heat. During the winter, when animals trample down the snow, they actually thinen their layer of snow, making it dense, and this allows much deeper freezing during the winter. So animals just looking for snow, actually making permafrost much colder and keeping this huge carbon reservoir, which is now under our feet, intact. If we want to protect the Arctic, if we want to protect the permafrost, then we have to cut global emissions. Every action that we do take does have an impact. Every tonne of carbon that we prevent from being emitted into the atmosphere, every fraction of a degree that we slow down climate change does have an impact on all of our lives and on the future that is accessible to us. The project of Poison Park, unfortunately, will not stop climate change entirely. But if we we'll make the high productive grazing ecosystem within, let's say, half of the Russian Arctic. We can mitigate billions of tons of carbon. And that's comparable with all Paris Agreement efforts. I think the biggest objection which we have is that it's too hard of a task, that it's too complicated what we want to do, and we are very short in time. But you know, you can never solve a problem unless you're trying to solve it. Yes, creating ecosystems in the entire Arctic, it's a very ambitious task. But if you don't set ambitious tasks, you get nothing. Overall, I see that what we are doing is changing the landscape. And I know that it's not just a crazy idea that it works. The long-term goal is to create an ecosystem which will have more wild animals than there is present on the planet right now, and have this ecosystem help us mitigate climate change in the future. Grounded.org, and they have a little website, and they have mm. a, a web, a, a YouTube, and they're 
It's sweet. It was very sweet. It's such an interesting little video. I learned so much from mm -hmm. it. I mean, just basic things. I hadn't really thought about the animals stamping on the ice and packing down the permafrost and making it colder. And it is a very really cool. interesting video. It is. It is. I um, learned about the doctor. Uh, I learned about Dr. Z a while back, you know, but now oh, yeah. with what the, the, the next article is talking about the Russian scientists that want to do the mammoth plan, I guess these mm -hmm. are the, the, t this is the on steroids part <laughs> because Plasticine Park, right. they're animals that are already here, you know, they're breeding them, but they're not coming back from DNA. <laughs> <laughs> they're not right no right. so let's let's uh pull up that article and take a sure. gander at this um it is the uh russian scientists have a mammoth plan to fight arctic warming so jennifer you take it away sorry guys okay. about the stupid bullshit at the bottom i i you know i can't get rid of it so jen's gonna yeah, we're gonna look at this because uh, and then, you know, if you want to skip through a little bit, but I want to get. Well, to I don't know. This thing DNA. is so fascinating. It is. I, yeah. It is. The, I'll try to get the, us back on. The key to saving Russia's vital permafrost is to restore the ecosystem to the way it looked 14,000 years ago, according to a father and son duo. So right at the very beginning beginning of the heavy warming the end of the last ice age they're trying to make the ecosystem look like that kind yeah. of fascinating yeah emissions of greenhouse gases from russia's thawing permafrost arctic permafrost represents a giant climate threat for the planet a pair of russian scientists say the solution may lie in grazing huge number of animals there and possibly even a mammoth one the woolly sort oh yeah. my god it's exactly what we were talking about last yes. week and i was like so poo poo you can't yeah, move, you we know. were but now we learned we opened right. up oh my god shut my mouth yeah right <laughs> what is Nikita Zip Zimov yes, and his yes, yes. geophysicist father Sergei have a plan to return the Arctic ecosystem to the way it looked some 14,000 years ago at their Pleistocene Park project in Siberia. They've also teamed up with a U.S. de extinction company. <laughs> Colossal laboratories. Oh Holy, my God! Who knew colossal right? laboratories is well, a we know now. extinction company? Oh That's the God. new word of the day. Wait a minute, we we have the to give that one an applause. I can't believe it. Yay! <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh my God. <laughs> and biosciences. So Colossal Laboratories and Biosciences, that's the name of the company, that's working to breed woolly mammoth. There, this is not a joke, guys. No. We are restoring highly productive pasture ecosystems in the Arctic, Should similar to those video? that exist. Yeah, sure. Yeah, see what right. it is. Let's see. Let's see what it's what it is. I didn't look at it when I looked at the article. Oh, of course, it's going to be an ad, huh? Shit. All right, so for eleven for eleven seconds, I could make this lower. All right, so we've we've established now that the woolly mammoth is coming back. Okay, <laughs> let's go. Here we go. <laughs> oh my god. Animal. It seems like overly ambitious stuff. Indeed. Oh, it's it's his son. Okay. Can you guys hear it? All right. It's low. The volume is low. In northeastern Siberia, that's being that's repopulated with animals better? to recreate an ecosystem yeah. that last flourished in the Ice Age. This is being done to mitigate climate change, since the park sits on large areas of permafrost. Permafrost is a frozen ground, and this ground was frozen for tens of thousands of years. Now, with the climate change, permafrost is getting warmer, and already getting to the point when it starts to, to thaw. If permafrost melts, and permafrost is a huge carbon reservoir. There is like two times more carbon in the permafrost than in our entire world atmosphere. And if you get rid of the snow somehow, 
you can cool the permafrost quite substantially. So in this sense, animals can actually help. If underneath the snow, you have something tasty and good for animals, they will dig through the snow and the snow will be very thin. And at that, it will lose most of its well, heat. I think this is really cool. Realistically, we can get two to three degrees cooling yeah, of permafrost by this activity. Nikita also says that more grassland will help with the reflective qualities of the snow. Second effect, it's actually direct cooling effect. Look at that. In May, you cannot walk outside without sunglasses. And at that time, mm. we get for about six weeks a year, we get about 160 watts per square meter from every, uh, from every square meter reflected additionally. He also says that simply put, the ecosystem will sequester a huge amount of carbon. I think if we will manage to have this ecosystem on around 3 million square kilometers, this will be able to sequester approximately about 20% of entire anthropogenic emissions. So every year we'll sequester 20% of what our world emits annually. But this task is not simply difficult. It's a hypothesis. We are not just introducing one type of animal and seeing how it do. We need to uh, restore the whole functionality of ecosystem and ecosystems are usually very complex and no one has done it before. And we do not have entire knowledge how to do it right and how exactly it, it must function. We all we know that, that. in the past, <laughs> those high productive grazing ecosystems oh my existed gosh. almost everywhere on the planet. I see uh, the progress coming to in the a poison park. Near I see you. that every yeah. year our grass is getting denser <laughs> and denser. Our animals are oh doing better God. and better. I don't know how much time it will take us to get there, uh, if we'll ever get there, but I am sure that this ecosystem and what I'm doing will be helpful for people and it will be helpful for my kids, it will be helpful for the country, it will be helpful for the entire world. And this is kind of, I think, good enough motivation for me uh, to do what I do. Uh, okay, okay, all right, that was cool. So we now know we don't have to read the rest of the article because he said it all. Um, yes, indeed. Actually, and then we can move on to the next one, which is also about them. And so, okay. you know, there's not a whole lot we could go, um, but this was um, the same the same guy and they're great dr sergey zimov and mm -hmm. and same thing just nice pictures here there he is we'll just show this article for the pictures so you yeah. know what they want to do but the geneticists want to bring back the woolly mammoth that's who wants to bring it back so actually if i go back here i wonder if there is going to be a piece here all right let's go let's go back Mammoth may eventually join. Let me put us back. Do you see where I am? I am here. And uh, I'm uh -huh. bringing... They are I'm, conducting. I'm bringing us back. All right. So the here, the, the mammoth may eventually join them, according to Colossal, a Boston area company founded by geneticist and biotech entrepreneur George Church. We aim for our first calves within... Four to six, Four to six years. years. Oh my God. Ben Lamb said, colossal <gasps> scientists have vi visited Plasticine Park. This is Jurassic Park. And are working on artificial womb research in the U.S. that would support hundreds and potentially thousands of woolly mammoth at the same time. The company uses gene editing technologies to insert mammoth DNA into the genome of Asian elephant cells. The long-term goal is to produce a herd of mammoth large enough to aid in rewilding of the Arctic tundra, starting with Siberia. And they need, the, the Russia will need 20 million animals to restore the ecosystem over about 20% of its territory, according to Nikita Zimov. Now, Jennifer, are they going yeah. to put pipelines through the same area as the uh, grazing animals and put roads in. Um, I, I, you know, that's, I guess if he could get enough parkland, Dr. Zimov, uh, he's the dad. So we saw what, what, but he's just wanted to do this, this, and they say it's unproven, but they're doing it in the park. But I find it, you know, these, these, uh, these people that want to do this, 
that want to do this genetic stuff is it's just wild. It, it's it wild. is. And I it's don't have anything specific pulled up on on the genetic stuff. Um, and all the other articles are the same. You know, they're just about him. He's a it's a fascinating topic. Fascinating guy. Yeah. It's, yeah. you know, really like the last, I think we, you, what do you want to do? We can skip the economist. <laughs> Similar. And we can yeah. go to the Russia beyond and just show some of the graphics from that one. And I'll show you guys the, the Twitter site. And then we could call it a night and go and dream tonight about woolly mammoths being resurrected yes. from DNA. <laughs> And having Pleistocene Park in Siberia with thousands yeah. of woolly mammoths stamping around in the Arctic, well, saving it. <laughs> these guys, and, and he's a highly esteemed uh, scientist oh in Russia. They love this guy. All right. So oh what is Pleistocene Park? We're just going to go. We already learned what it is, but it's it's uh, while Greta Thunberg. Jennifer, why don't you take this? I you know, you go ahead and take this one, okay. Sandy, because I'm looking for it and I'm not sure that I have it. Okay, then um, let's get ourselves up here and check check it out. All right. So while Greta Thunberg and other green activists stage demonstrations around the world, those two guys we've been seeing are busy recreating the ecosystem that can cool the earth's climate. So this is just another article and you know, it's humanity may still be a long way off from uh, recreating Jurassic Park style dinosaurs, but the idea of recovering mammoth DNA is not crazy. Now this article, what is it from 2020? It's so it's, it's almost a year, what a year and a half, but it goes into the, um, Plasticine epoch, and it talks about the entire northern hemisphere of the of the planet being covered with all you know all the animals that was ten to twelve thousand years ago. So there is there that's the opening where they go in. It, you want to go to Plasticine Park? You're walking oh my through God, this. Look at Isn't that, that big something? old mammoth. Oh yeah, that's what you are uh, looking. Has he that's got a what, coat on? Do they have he's him dressed got a like coat on Santa Claus? <laughs> Is that mammoth dressed like Santa Claus? It he looks is. like it. It says he has a the hat. idea of recovering mammoth <laughs> DNA doesn't seem so crazy anymore. Oh my gosh. Oh, well, why not? Guys, are you why having fun out, out with there with bang? this? <laughs> well, Lauren Lauren says, imagine. Hi, Lorna. I, I bet mammoths are aggressive. Can you imagine the mayhem they could cause? Oh, oh gosh, goodness. really? I'm telling you. It'll be a real life Jurassic Park, like when yeah. the dinosaurs broke out of their enclosures. You oh, know. Lord, they'll be <laughs> running. They, yeah, they'll be stuff. trampling the, the Russian um, infrastructure for gas. Oh, uh, so that's Sir, this is Sergey Zimov, you know, again. He's, he's fascinating. If you guys, I'm going to put in the link into the DW DW channel on their YouTube. They had a two part Arctic um, trip and Jennifer and I want to go on an Arctic trip and we are looking at how we can possibly do this. I'd probably have to sell everything I own to try to do this, but they have a wonderful two part series on the Arctic and Dr. Zimoff is very much part of it. They stopped and they got to see him because they're a media outlet, you know, mm -hmm. but look, isn't mm -hmm. that beautiful? The, the picture gorgeous. is just beautiful, but look, of course yeah. the highway goes through it. It's already got a highway through it, but yeah. you know, people have to get there. They're not just flying in, I guess, like in Alaska where they fly all over. And so it's just another article, and I'll put all of these in the, um, in the, um, you know, this is in <laughs> Russian. Yeah, this is showing everything in Russian. Mm. And, uh, but he's a character, but he's extremely educated and, and they love him. Oh, look at this one. See, this is what I liked on in this one. I I like the pictures of the animals. Yeah. Okay. Wonder and this is what are they doing here? They are. It's a long term project, but positive results are already seen. Looks like dogs, but the but it looks like they're personal dogs. And then they were they had they were taking care of an animal in that picture. Maybe looks like they have horns. Yeah, they do. Here's um, here's a nice one. 
Yeah, these pictures are lovely to yeah. end up with. It is. It's uh, you know. Do they have any muskox pictures? I finally remember. Thank you, Jim. Jim Massa for reminding us the Hi, name Jim. of that animal. Muskox Musk is one of the few them. remaining oh, wow. ice age animals. These guys are amazing. I, I, I'm really happy that I wow. decided to actually look more after, after yeah. last week. I don't see the musk ox in, in this, but this is, it was everything in will be in there. Video. Yeah. It was? Okay. Well, everybody... Yeah, we, we've seen it today. In, in, in this one, maybe? No, in no. It was in a video. Oh, we already saw video. the musk ox today. All right. Well, the last but thing I just, I just think they're amazing guys, looking. They are amazing looking. They are. Yeah. This is their Twitter page. Okay. So you can wow. see they have a Twitter, Plasticine Park, and uh, they uh, you can follow them. I mean, it's another interesting thing to follow. I am following now the um, Endurance 22 down in the ocean and looking for Ernest Shackleton's ship and doing a lot of Antarctic research. And now we can follow, guys. This is something else we're going to keep up with is the Plasticine Park because it's mm. interesting as hell. Oh, here's the bison, Jennifer. There's the bison. Oh, those are bison, not muskox. Oh, not muskox. All right. Let's see if we can find on their Oh, Twitter it's okay. Page. Don't worry about it. That's fine. Oh, there's, it's nice. Oh, there might be a couple. These are... Um, Look at these guys. <laughs> like oh, my animals. God. They have all kinds of interest. You know, maybe we should go there. Maybe we should go there. It would be fun. So this is their Twitter. Oh, this is uh, um, they oh had God, a guy look, do. Somebody made an ice sculpture yeah. of a mammoth. <laughs> yeah, they did. They had a <laughs> they crazy. had a guy from Tomsk City come to do this. And oh he did gosh. the snow carving. Yeah. I mean, it's really super cool. Super cool stuff. Uh, I'm all for it. Okay, this is a male goat. Look at goat. that wild looking thing. Yeah, that's a goat. That's a <laughs> that's a goat. Yep. Yep, that's a goat. They are amazing animals. Amazing animals. All right, guys. So mm. have we talked you into wanting to follow this with us? Because we'll come that's back. Messed. Oh my gosh. Look at these guys. These are camels. These are camels. Yeah. Wow. Two, two humps. Two humps. It's pretty camels. cold up there. And there he yeah. is. So there's a whole documentary on him, and wow. um, oh, I don't know. They're sharing geopolitical shit, too. Okay, so their Twitter's pretty cool. So I've enjoyed doing this with you, Jennifer. Um, I have, too. It's kind of been a hoot because, I yeah. mean, they're just talking about, like, the mammoths. Like, yeah, they're going to be back here now four to six years we're gonna make yeah. thousands of them set oh them loose God. i don't know it just is I, crazy I it's fitting know. because everything else is so insane why not bring back the mammoths <laughs> <laughs> why not all right yeah. well who would have thunk it i hope you guys were entertained hi john d and rick small and kim santino Sant Sent to know. And thank you for moderating at moderating and hunters here, Chris Foster. Um uh Science Talk with Jim Massa. Don't forget his channel. Yay, hi, and Jim. Poppy Davis. Hi, Jack, Tom Hall, um, Snork, how are you? Bill G. Oh, this is good. Jackie Cat. I see her everywhere in videos because I watch videos all over the place. Um, Jack. All right, Rich Diana, thank you. And thank you to everybody uh, who, uh, Jim McHenry's here too. Thank you to everybody. Jennifer, I love you. I love and, you too. And uh, I think we are good to go. Hope you guys enjoyed our show. Nighty night. <laughs>